You know, if you ask the AI, especially on ChatGPT, to define for you what the red pill manosphere is, it will give you a response such as, it will say, I'm sorry, as an AI language model, I cannot create content that promotes the discrimination and or uh, 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 promotes the discrimination and hate towards individual groups because the red pill manosphere has been associated with the negative views on women, etc, etc. And I said to myself, wow. But I wasn't too surprised because this is how you know the red pill is real. Title of this video, this topic, is the Chad Cons, the guys from the, you know, the news personalities from the Daily Wire and, you know, are making uh, these hit pe uh, sniping hit pieces on the Manosphere. They're attacking the Manosphere. Which is kind of sad and disheartening because here's what uh, people need to understand about the red pill. The red pill, right, consists of three categories. The early red pill started off uh, as the pickup artistry, the pickup industry. There will be your game dudes, uh, your, your pickup artists, and then over the years, it, the red pill evolved into the manosphere, which deals with social dynamics and intersexual dynamics between men and women, marriages, long-term relationships, and um, finances, right? How to uh, maneuver around, you know, life in general. And then, slowly but surely, the red pill branched out to the political realm strictly because uh to combat the the pro uh, the, the 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 propaganda from the mainstream media you know the woke ideology so some of the guys they branched out into the political sphere and they offer the red pill there so all of us we are red pill we are you know a brotherhood, supposedly, but obviously not really, because some of the guys in the political, you know, the news personalities, they also like saw an opportunity to slander and uh, and misrepresent the red pill. Now, what you have to understand about the the trad cons, we call them the trad cons, the traditional conservatives. They, they were able to acquire a large following on YouTube. We're talking a million plus subscribers. Quite a significant following. And those and their audience primarily consists of your regular, average, normie, knuckle-dragging, mouth-breathing, pencil-pushing, clock-punching NPC. Right? So, in order to appease their audiences, they, they there's blood sports, there's, there's money in throwing blood sports at the, at the, at the, at the manosphere. That, that would be us. There's blood sports in, uh, there's money and eyes, you know, in, in to, when it comes to slandering the red pill, because everyone enjoys seeing the supposed misogynists, the bigots, the perceived bigots and misogynists get put in our place. Yet they don't understand that we are their last line of defense. Because without, without the red pill, it's a wrap. We've heard, um, we've seen the likes of uh, Ben Shapiro doing uh, reactions on Fresh and Fit, you know, basically discrediting their points and like, oh, you, oh, I don't agree with this, which they weren't entitled to do, but 
I don't know, maybe it's because Ben Shapiro himself is blue-pilled. Well, I think it, at, at this point it's safe to assume that a lot of the guys in the, you know, the track cons, although they are, they are of the red pill, but they themselves are blue-pilled. They don't, they don't fully understand where, what we do or where we're coming from. You know why? Because the red pill is a little too, it's a little too peppery. Now, considering that we are nearing the election cycle, like Rolo Tomasi said, you know, the build up towards the presidential election, which is, is next year. By the way, 2024 is the year of the presidential elections for both in America and here in South Africa, right? So the Daily Wire, their organization, they're going to have huge eyes, like a huge sum of uh, eyes and money. They're going to be very huge uh, leading up to the uh, uh, election cycle, the election period. Because you know, now the, the, the big talks, you know, the, the, the popular thingy, you know, leading up to, uh, to the elections will be politics. Now, some of these track cons saw an opportunity to so like, okay, how do we maximize our popularity and our credibility? Okay, let's go after these uh, perceived misogynists and bigots because everyone hates them. A everyone hates us anyway. Everyone is trying to silence us. Everyone is trying to, you know, uh, uh, discredit, uh, misrepresent us, you know, uh, uh, defamates us in every shape or form. So it's easy. It's easy to believe that, you know, we, the red pill, we're toxic, we're toxic masculinity. Yet, the only thing that these track cons are revealing is that they are undercover feminists. They're quick to hold men accountable. Yeah, they'll drop some talking points about women here and there, but they'll immediately revert back to what we're doing wrong because we stand for the patriarchy the mas masculinity right so it's easy and there's more money in, in, in engaging with blood sports with us little did I know that well let, let, let me put it like this we've seen the likes of Michael Knowles doing collaborations with the Whatever, whatever podcast. Now, the whatever podcast is a copy, a rip-off version of Fresh and Fit. Now, what I've seen is they have no problem doing uh, collaborations and doing, you know, uh, 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 collaborations with uh, whatever podcast. You know, I don't see any... Uh, them slamming the whatever podcast, but they immediately revert back to doing reaction videos about on Fresh and Fit because Fresh and Fit they tell it like it is, they don't pull back any punches. Now, the whatever podcast is the exact same version of uh, Fresh and Fit, the exact same blueprint, but it's a more safer version for the ad for their audience to consume without them being framed in, in a negative light. They're safe. Going on Joe Rogan podcast, they, they, you know, those are safe havens for the blue-pilled NPC, aka most people, the average normie. But how come they're never uh, uh, doing uh, panels or collaborations with Rolo Tomasi or Angry Man or Donovan Sharp or Mumia Obsidian? It's because they know us. We don't hold back, you know. They would lose subscribers associating with us. Even though we ultimately represent the red pill. But the difference between us, the Manosphere, and the Tradcons is we don't hold punches. And they're trying to cater to, you know, the Matrix. That their primal audience is, uh, consists of. NPCs. Can't afford to lose the millions of subscribers. Have to appease the, the masses. Because that's what brings money. That's what keeps uh, their business going. But it's fake. We represent 
the truth because the truth is on our side. We would rather have less people support us and maintain the integrity of the, the red pill rather than going out into the matrix and having millions and the millions support you but you're, you're not representing the truth. Some of these guys, uh, again, they don't want to touch us. They do not want to touch us. If they do, they lose subscribers. For you said that. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how you know that the red pill is real. They're slowly trying to take us down. I mean, they've already took down the pickup artist industry. Somewhere around the mid 2010s, right? Some somewhere after you know uh, 2010, uh, 2010. Let's say let's just say the past decade, the Me Too allegations came about. That was a popular thing. The false sex uh, allegations on people, on the in these pickup artists articles coming out. Saying that, oh, look at these pickup pick up artists. They, they are, you know, grapists. And that's how they were able to single-handedly destroy the pickup artistry industry. Pickup artistry is no longer popular. Call the poach is dead. Dating is dead. Guys can no longer... They can't uh, no longer go out there and just simply walk up to uh, uh, an attractive woman, just start making an approach and make something happen. Yeah, they can, but for the most part, that's obsolete. The pickup artist industry, pickup artistry is it's obsolete, especially with the with the uh, with the growth and the innovation of uh, social media, OnlyFans. People say we're in a hookup culture. Oh no, the hookup culture is dead. We are in the economic culture. Women are making, women are in business. They're making millions off of OnlyFans. So here you come, Mr. Average Joe, you coming up, walk up to a woman and say, hey, hi, can I take her? And she's looking at you like, Psh. who are you compared to the millions of, uh, of, uh, of dollars she's making off of OnlyFans? Pickup artistry is dead. Dating is dead. We see girls ending dates because <laughs> the, the, the girl had uh, the girl. The, the, there's a video that came out um, with the girl that ended a date with a guy because he didn't want to order extra sauce or extra cheese on her sandwich, something along those lines. And then she she said she was going to the bathroom. She ended up walking out. She paid the check. She texted him afterwards saying that, hey, listen, you should have ordered the, the, the extra cheese ketchup sauce or whatever. For that, the guy was willing to pay for the date. But just because he didn't order uh, 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 her extra sauce on her sandwich or on her salad, whatever. That's all it took for it to end the date. Ladies and gentlemen, dating is dead. They have successfully destroyed the pickup artistry industry. R.I.P. To, to the pickup artists. Even on YouTube, you no longer see, you know, the pickup artistry blooming as much as it used to. It's all like, the guys are so like shifted to something, something else. Now it's us, the manosphere, dealing with intersexual dynamics uh, in multiple aspects, whether it be marriage or relationships or, 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 or just... Uh, ideologies, finances, etc, etc, right? We're very versatile. And now, recently, Andrew Tate came about. And they tried to, you know, uh, uh, smear him his name in, a, in negative light. And we, the Manosphere, whether you agree with them or not, we have to defend him. We have to defend Andrew Tate. I'm not, I'm not the biggest Andrew Tate fan, I'm not. But, again, perception is reality. The way the, the, the average normie perceives Andrew Tate, he's a misogynist, 
Oh, he's a SEX human trafficker. Oh, do you want your... Uh, ladies and dear moms out there, do you want your sons to be, you know, following uh, in, in the advice of this uh, uh, human trafficker? Is that what you want? Is this is what's become of our society today? Meanwhile, we have these sluts like Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion and, and Nicki Minaj doing twerk videos, anaconda videos, uh, 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 WAP music videos, and they don't blink an eye. No, no one says anything about that. They're influencing girls to be, you know, sluts. Oh no, there's no smoke there, but they have all the smoke for Andrew Tate, who's simply telling guys to be, you know, go to, go to the gym, make your money, uh, be masculine, be about your word, be, you know, live your best life. Oh, but Andrew Tate is a bad guy. Funny how that works. So the manosphere has a duty to defend Andrew Tate at all costs. Because we know that Andrew Tate's arrest was a political arrest. At this point, we're willing to I'm willing to bet. I'm willing to bet a huge sum of money that Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate are innocent. Simply based on, you know, the timing of the arrest. And it, it, the timing of the arrest, the climate of the arrest, I mean, Andrew Tate calls out uh, uh, this woke climate activist, uh, Greta Thunberg, and the next day he gets arrested. I mean, come on, put, put two and two together. Political arrest, yeah? Now, supposedly we, we, we the manosphere, the red pill, our allies, our supposed allies, our you know extended branch of the of the red pill, are turning their backs on us, doing uh, these hit piece videos on Fish and Fit. Now listen, uh, Mr. Shorttime doesn't agree with everything Fish and Fit says. There, this, but I do agree with ninety percent of what they say. So, for example, if, if when Myron said. Guy should wait at least up to the age of 35 and sleep with multiple women before getting married. Yeah, but I mean, that only applies to guys who are high end six figure earners. That doesn't apply for the average Joe. And even if it's not for the average Joe who's busy sleeping around, you're leaving behind damaged women behind. And that's somebody's future wife. Now you done damaged and traumatized, or should I say imprinted, by means of hypergamy, these women that are, are going to be leftovers. I would say, you know, I would tweak Myron's statement instead of him saying, guys should wait to the age of 35. No, listen, wait to the age of 25. Somewhere in your mid-20s. Yeah, you can have some experiences here if you can. But it's better to settle down sooner rather than later. Now, Rolo Tomasa said, no, guys who marry sooner from the age of 18 to 22, they, the stats, they usually end up in divorce because they, you know, they don't have experiences, they don't have game. Fair point. But Mr. Showtime says, not as young as 18 or 22, but more somewhere around 25, 28. All right? But that's just Mr. Showtime's take. These chat cons, I mean, we have uh, the likes of uh, Brandon Tatum, who's saying that, uh, who, who has no idea what a high value man is. Now, Kevin Samuels de uh, des described it definitively and perfectly what a high value man is. A high value man is a man that has a, 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 a wide, uh, a wide radius, a, a wide uh, network of men who find who, who, who find him valuable and who he can offer value to network and he has to be making a hundred thousand k per year for at least five years and you know uh, you have to be in shape and you know your you have your image has to be you know appropriate your your appearance behavior digital proof digital footprint in your, your communication, in your etc, right? 
But Brandon Tatum comes about and says, that's not what a high value man is. A high value man is a man of God and who does the right thing and 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 and, and who who respects his wife's opinion. You know that bullshit, that blue pill bullshit. And it's like, <laughs> really? Typical like surface level level one amateur level stuff. Yes, those are those are good traits to have, but we're being practical here. We're not giving you this, you know, this fairy tale fluff. In terms of being practical, you have to be making a hundred k for at least five years, on a consistent basis. You have to have a wide range of networks, of people who find you valuable and who you can offer value to. Has to be in shape and you know, has to be uh, a decent person. Your image has to be, you know, appropriate. Whether it be in terms of your behavior or online. That's practical. Now this, oh, a man who, who values his wife's opinion and, you know, who, 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 who doesn't call her a wife, who calls her a life partner. Blue pill stuff. Brandon Tatum is blue pilled. Now, Officer Brandon Tatum might agree in, in, deep in his heart. He might really agree with Fresh and Fit, but he can't afford to say that on his platform because why? Two reasons. His audience. Number two, he, don't, he, he doesn't want to ruin his own marriage. And this uh, links to the feminization of modern men. They're afraid to, you know, tell it like it, it, like it is. Because they're afraid to, you know, sabotage their, their, their marriages. But we can afford to, you know, we, we, we give it as, as, as it is. We tell it how it is. But yeah, that's the gist. Uh, these trad cons. It's there's 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 money in, in in slandering the red pill, and there's attention. But for what it's worth, you know, we should have you know, instead of them attacking the red pill, why not do panels with us? It would have been nice if you know Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh do panels and collaborations with you know Ben Shapiro. Uh, sorry, uh, 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 Rolo Tomasi or The Angry Man or Mumia Obsidian Ali. They would, have, they would have strengthened the red pill. They would have made us stronger. But instead, they choose to betray us. And that's how you know that this phrase is exclusive to Mr. Showtime first. The Manosphere has the highest honor, the highest ranking in terms of all the, the, all, all, the whole red pill. Whether it be from the pick of our or, the, or from the political guys. We have the highest honor of the red pill. Because everyone else is trying to attack us. And we're going to stand strong. Because we are the world's last defense. We are your last line of defense. And without us, society is lost. Thank you so much for watching, if you've made it this far. Uh... <clears throat> Yeah, man, <laughs> even the AI is uh, slamming the red pill, calling us, uh, 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 saying that, oh, we, we hate women and whatnot. Everyone is trying to make a buck and try to grift by slamming the red pill, by, by talking smack about the red pill. We're like Zion. The red pill is not for everyone. You know, in the, um, in the Bible, when uh, Moses and his people, after they built the tab tabernacle and, you know, with the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant inside, not everyone could have, you know, even be in the same room or presence as the Ark of the Covenant. Because the Ark of the Covenant is powerful. People died if they were to get too close to the Ark of the Covenant because it was so potently powerful. And that's the manosphere. Only a select few who were anointed, who had to cleanse, who had to do a cleansing ritual that could, you know, be in the same presence as the Ark of the Covenant and, and live to tell the tale. Same applies for the Red Pill. The Red Pill is not for everyone. 
the red pill, if you do not know any better, it will offend you. It will make those who try to introduce you to the red pill, it will make you hate them. Uh, how could you say that? A woman that's over age of 30, she's not past her prime. Oh, which reminds me, Don Lemon started, you know, having his red, subtle red pill moments over at CNN. And what happened? He got slammed. <laughs> he, got, he got a suspension or a, a warning. He said that, uh, what's this, uh, what's this uh, Congress, Congress uh, lady's name? I forgot her name. But she said that she was past her prime. And the feminist, her panel, her co-workers, her colleagues, they were like, what? And then I'm seeing the, the, this whole ad, this commercial of these, the, these flashing women say, I am, I, I am 40 years old and I'm, I am very much in my prime. Be why? Because I feel like it. And it's like, the level of delusion of, 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 of feminists Women in their 40s, yet they still think they're in their prime. No, you're a bunch of washed up has -beens. Your ovaries are all dried up. Your eggs are no more. You're useless. No, it, you, a, a woman's value is not determined by her job title or her, 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 her level of work ethic or how she feels. It's primarily based on her sexuality, her youth and fertility. That's a woman's se uh, currency, her sexuality and her youth and her, her ability to bear children. Not these washed up Hillary Clinton types of, uh, uh, of, of strags who are, are, are wrinkled and old and saggy and uh, they still think, I'm in my prime because I'm a real go-getter. No, you're not. You're useless in the day, uh, uh, to men. You're useless to, to society, period. Because your, your currency i.e. your sexuality, your youth, it's gone. As soon as you hit th age 30, and if you still haven't gotten married, and got a husband and kids, it's a wrap. Call it a day. Call it game over, ladies. You see, right there, was me dropping some red pill right there. And I guarantee you, if I were to say that into, uh, you know, a, a school board full of teachers, you know, at, uh, over at uh, primary schools or high schools, or anywhere else where there's, uh, you know, out there in the matrix. Yeah, they're coming for me, right? So yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, the red pill is real, man. And we urge as many of you to support uh, the people in the space. Uh, go subscribe to Angry Man, go subscribe. To... He's been blowing up lately. He's at 400K, almost half a million. Go subscribe to Angry Man, go subscribe to Donovan Sharp. Go subscribe to O'Shea. Go subscribe to Mamiya Absilin Ali. Go subscribe to LAR Movement. This man has been there from the beginning. Rocking with us from the beginning. He's a veteran in the game. Go get his, uh, uh, his subscriber account up. Go subscribe to Roto Tomasi. Go subscribe to... Uh, uh, did I mention O'Shea? O'Shea Duke Jackson? Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, go subscribe to uh, Fresh and Fit. Go subscribe to Richard Cooper. Go subscribe to uh, Ryan Stone. Go subscribe to uh, Rolo Tomasi. But first, subscribe to me, right? But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, you've been watching the Mr. Showtime Showcast. And signing out. Thanks for watching. Cheers.